Hey everybody! Welcome to yet another episode of Aches and Gains with Doc and Donnie. There it is. <laughs> I, I am Dr. Hayes Estes. Donnie! Let's hope she actually puts back there what she normally does, because if not, we're going to be pointing at something like, this, I hope, guy, actually, I hope this she, guy's a dick, you know? I hope, I hope she puts something back there that's completely uh, it's irrelevant, irrelevant gonna, yeah, yeah. or, you know... Perfect. PG Inflammatory, PG-13. Yeah, yeah, we got to keep it PG-13, yeah. because yeah. once again, we're all about the kids. What? Yeah. What, is, what is going on, Donnie? Well... It's a big, uh, big thing that happened a couple weeks ago. No, not the Chiefs getting Jeez, beat by the Bucks. Man, we already did that. Episode. No, 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 not that one. That was old news. No, that's still not old news. It's great because we got another what? Uh, got another eleven months. Yeah, yes. eleven yeah. months in a week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> until they lose again. All right. So, no, a, 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 I'm a huge fan of old school football. Uh, we're talking like before they threw a flag for you know fanning somebody's face, uh, and there was a guy who had been whiffed by the Hall of Fame for many years, who was a great football player, old school, before this whole stuff came out. Uh, and from all accounts from everybody I've talked to, a great guy. So, John, John Lynch, 47, congrats on the Hall of Fame. Yeah, there we go. That's all I wanted to do on that one. I loved you on the that- Broncos. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> AFC doesn't count. <laughs> Man, no, no, that guy's a great football player, and... Uh, and like I said, I've never met him, but from all accounts that I've heard, he's been he's a great guy, um, family man, this kind of stuff. So well deserved. Um, and and uh, somehow Warren Sapp got in the Hall of Fame before you did. <sighs> Canton, that's on you. Anyway, yeah. All right, let's go. <laughs> what do you got going on, brother? <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> Donnie, have you ever had a cold? Uh. <laughs> No, uh, I've no. never actually had a cold. I don't. I don't ever get sick. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm borrowing this from one of my buddies, Elliot Hulse. Never get sick. Of them. I always fight stuff off. That's it. You don't get sick. You just fight it off. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah never been sick. I just always fight stuff off. Yeah, same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if we're gonna be honest about it. I, I, I never missed. I never missed a day of of school growing up because because I was too sick to go to school. Yeah. Granted. Uh, you know, maybe there were times I never. Well, okay, I will. I've never, never had the flu, uh, so uh, you know, it, whatever, whatever I was fighting off was not, did not make me sick enough where I didn't have to go to school. Mm. The one time that I had to, uh, I was not able to participate in a sporting event. Uh, I think I was like ten, and I didn't know it at the time because my parents were out of town. I had a babysitter and I had a soccer game. Uh, I actually had a case of bronchitis, <laughs> and I still tried to. I still played for like 15 minutes in a soccer game before my coach saw me like wheezing, and he was like, "All right, you need to get out." <laughs> of all sports, yeah, yeah. soccer and bronchitis. Yeah. Like, yeah. What can unless you're the goalie, you are running the entire time. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, I, yeah. Well, Donnie, if it's not known by now how much of a psychopath I am. <laughs> we're gonna, we like to call it masochist. Yeah, okay, okay sorry. Thank you. That's My a little bad. bit more uh, right. socially acceptable yeah, besides okay. psychopath. Okay. Yeah. My bad. You like to hurt yourself, I nobody do, else? I do like to hurt myself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so that was the only time that I could not physically compete any longer in a sporting event because I could not breathe because I had bronchitis. Mm -hmm. So other than that, I, you know, I've had little minor sniffles here and there. Nothing really really like knocked me down. Uh, you know, and, uh, in the day and age that we're in right now, I've been feeling pretty damn good. Yeah. So crazy what that immune system will do. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You know, so, um, the reason that I, I asked you is because since we like to work out so much, as you can tell, uh, is, uh, you know, the topic of today's conversation, of today's podcast is working out with a cold or working out to beat a cold. And um, I think that you and I may have differing opinions. Well, I definitely know that we do because we talked about this beforehand. But Donnie, what are your thoughts on working out to get rid of a cold or beat a cold? All right, so I'm going to come at this from an, a, probably a different angle than you are. Okay. And I'm going to come at it from a competitive strength athlete. That's how I'm going to look at this. Right. So when, when, I, when, I, when I'm talking here, it's not somebody who is just going to the gym to do some bicep curls and ab crunches. I'm talking about someone who is on a training cycle for a competition who is uh, maybe above intermediate or immediate or above. Okay. So uh, I noticed whenever, obviously, whenever you're trying to be the best at something or the best that you can be at something, 
Um, there has to have a lot of things go right all at the same time in order to do the best. Uh, nutrition has to be there. Hydration, sleep, uh, you know, how you feel, um, you know, the, the, the training environment. Hell, that's, that's something we definitely have to take into account. Um, those all things have to be good in order to be the best. Um, so when, when you're talking about your, a physical illness, uh, we're talking maybe like having a fever, something to the point where your body has, has been attacked and it's fighting things off. It's diverting its energy to fighting off an illness uh, in whatever facet. To me, as a strength athlete, you are susceptible, you're susceptible to injury uh, at that point much more than other times because your body isn't fully prepared to take on the task that you're doing. So when I was sick, and oh, I'm sorry, fighting. Oh. Wait, so come on, yeah, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I would abstain from heavy lifting. Now, does that mean I didn't go to the gym? If I was, you know, if I was, if I was feeling contagious to the point where I had something, that I didn't want to spread it to my training partners. But uh, if I was just having a headache or something like that, I would divert from my training plan for that day and then either not go if I was feeling that bad or do something that would just made me feel better, blood flowing, pump, that kind of stuff. I would not continue my training cycle. Um, and, and like I said, it would have to be bad enough to do that. And we're not talking like sniffles. All right, so there's my opinion on that level. So um, no, I would definitely divert away from that because I did not want to, to become more susceptible to injury. When you're dealing with high level weights, when you're doing 90% weights uh, at a higher level, you're already, it's, it's, it's like a drag motor. The motor can blow at any point. Uh, for, for no re other reason besides the fact that you're pushing the limits of the human body. You don't want to kind of um, antagonize that. So there's my take on it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I understand obviously where you're coming from. Yep. And I, my official recommendation t it, it, for competitive athletes is probably either, you know, if, if you're not in the contagious part of the cycle, uh, to either take a day off. Uh, you know, or go at it with lesser intensity. And essentially, that's what I did mm -hmm. whenever I would, you know, when, whenever I was fighting some off and I went to the gym. I, you know, again, being the masochist that I am, and well, more, more so like I, as, <laughs> as, as much as I see on a daily basis in my uh, career as a physical therapist uh, and, and how long it takes for the body to actually recover from something, I'm an impatient bastard. <laughs> and, Ironic, given your yeah, field. It, you're yeah, absolutely. It yeah. took you an hour and a half to get to that point. Yeah. But there's some serious <laughs> irony in there. Yeah. 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 And, and so I want, like, when I feel sick, I'm like, or, or if I have like a some sort of like strain or strain or something like that, I'm like, why don't I feel better now? <laughs> and and so, but you know what help <laughs> this squatting. <laughs> <laughs> so what I would do is go to the gym, you know, and. And sweat it out, uh, and and I, I the thing is, and this is probably the you know the reinforcement I got. I felt better, and <laughs> I I felt like I recovered quicker from any little uh, head cold uh, than like you know my my friend who was like, oh man, I can't I can't work out, man. I'm gonna take like a week off, and mm. I'm like, f that. I'm gonna go work out, and get a sweat on, and and get moving. There there is evidence to support. You know my methodology. Okay. Okay. Let's Going back, it. yeah. So, yeah. so the American Journal of I'm gonna I don't even know how to pronounce this Oto Olorunjali. I don't even know. I mean, I sound like an absolute moron right now. Should here. have had me say that. Oto Olorunjali. <laughs> Oto Olorunjali. Sounds right. Oto Olorunjali. Got it. Anyway, Let's just ask Google. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter. I'm an idiot. 1987. 1987, Great year. Uh, effects of steam inhalation on nasal patency and nasal symptoms in patients with a common cold. And so what they found way back in the 80s, steam inhalation resulted in alleviation of cold symptoms and increased nasal patency in a significantly higher percentage of patients in the actively treated group than the placebo-treated group. So, And let's point out, common cold is yeah. a virus. Yeah. There we go. So we're talking viral. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I, mean, I thought we were going to get canceled. Nope. All right. <laughs> Just pointing so, it out. This virus, not bacterial. <laughs> yeah. Move on. Got it. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, opening up the nasal passages 
alleviated those cold symptoms because I could, you know, breathe, feel better, get oxygen uh, into my system. Um, and, and so, you know, I don't know about you, but I kind of like oxygen. It's, it's, uh, it's mostly my friend. I enjoy raw dogging it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know what that means. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> uh, so, so point being, I'm going to go and I'm going to work out. I'm going to get my sweat on. All right. And, and so if my symptoms are above the neck, so to speak, the head cold that we're talking about, you know, these are things that like you have a little runny nose, like a little nasal congestion. Maybe you're sneezing a little bit, minor sore throat. These are things that respond very well to increase blood flow to the area, opening up the passageways to basically kind of clear everything out. And so that for that reason, whenever I got, you know, a, something like that, fighting it off, that's why I was like, man, I got to go. I got to get to the gym. I got to get moving. I got to sweat. And then I felt better. So that that has always been my methodology. And again, we got a little evidence to back it up. I'm going to learn how to pronounce that word yep. or I'm not going to be a doctor anymore. Next episode, he'll have it. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Otolaryngology. <laughs> Laryn- <laughs> hey, put it in the comments. Let us know if you know it. <laughs> <laughs> let us, let let us know if you're an, from there. Let us know if you're an otolaryngologist. <laughs> yeah. There you I think go. I got it. I think I got it that time. Let yeah. Me. Anyway. Heard, um, so. Just. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, any. Just, I mean, I have further thoughts. Yeah. No, no, no. That, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I mean, that's the. I, I think more, and you know, I, 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 I see there's studies there, but I think the type of mindset that you have, that is what's best for you. And you, what people reali- don't realize a lot of times is this whole placebo effect. While they call it a placebo, it, it is real. If, mm-hmm. if you feel that something helps you recover, there, it will help you recover in some facet. Maybe not in a full, full, uh, the full array of it, but there will be some of that. So if you feel that going to the gym or doing some sort of physical activity is going to help you feel better, God damn it, it will. <laughs> Simple as Wait, that. What about my research? So your, your research backs it up. Okay. But that is go. your mindset. Though. Okay. I, I, yes. I, you I have to understand. Saying. If somebody who does not have your masochistic mindset or even the most the more driven mindset, um, they may use that as a reason why it, it they feel worse. Mm-hmm. I no, I completely agree. I completely so, agree with what you're saying. And understanding who you are. The yes, the old you know mind over matter uh, yeah. you know concepts is that's ex- exactly it. I I basically if it really what it really boils down to if I'm going to be armchair psychologist here <laughs> is my my need for control (laughs) yeah yeah i need control and if i have something in my body that's not allowing me to feel the way that i want to feel i'm gonna say screw it i'm taking over here's my need to control yeah and then i was like oh yeah by the way i get the extra side positive side effects of exercise you know so all of the things about you know increasing nasal patency that we talk about increasing like the uh circumference uh you know dilating blood vessels and then, like, you know, serotonin, dopamine, get all that type mm-hmm. of jazz, a little bit of some adrenaline in there, and whoop de doo it's like I just took some emergency and <laughs> fought it off. <laughs> so before my mom, my ex-wife, or my current fiancé has a chance to comment on this, I'm just going to put myself out there. When I'm, when I'm fighting something off, I'm a little bitch. Like, <laughs> so the I'm going to be sitting in the bed going, this hurts, this hurts, this hurts. Now, I could have a compound fracture and be like, all right, I'm good. Yeah, good. Are you the same guy I'm who good. dropped the 250 pounds <laughs> yes, cement yes. block on your foot? And continued to yes. like, I'm good? Yes. Okay. That's where, that's where. So I'm just being honest here. So when sickness comes and tries to get me, that's when, that, that's when I'm at my most vulnerable. Got it. Yeah. Blocks, no big deal. I had a pool table literally dropped on my leg when I was nine years old. Thanks, Dad. And, uh. I, I, you know, I, I didn't have a cast on for three days after that. I was walking around. I can handle that stuff, <sighs> not the yeah. sickness stuff. So, yeah. so um, that's where I guess just different mindsets, like you said, in there. I'm, I want to curl up in the bed and think about like I want my mommy kind of stuff. But as soon as I'm done, I'm like, all right, let's go do this again. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, I mean, when I tore my ACL the second time, I uh, even though my leg immediately swelled up to like the size of three softballs. I just popped like 1,600 milligrams of ibuprofen. <laughs> yes. And I tried to walk back oh, on the good. field. I oh, tried good. to walk back on the field. And, like, you know, my teammates like, ah, uh, dude, you – I don't know if you just saw what happened to yourself <laughs> out there, but you can't play. Your knee only goes in one direction right <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah. 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 
Uh, so, yeah, but I mean, I admit that I'm sure that my wife will say the same thing that, you know, if I get a sniffle and, and I don't feel so hot, it's like, you know, I've just never knowing who you are, folks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, what I will say is that, you know, I mentioned before, if it's a, an above the neck type of situation, you're pretty safe, in, 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 and you're not, if you're not contagious, yeah. you're pretty safe going to the gym, working out, maybe do a little lesser intensity, uh, just kind of get that sweat going, kind of you know, open everything up. Right. If it's below the neck, especially you know, some sort of upset stomach, uh, n- nausea, <laughs> diarrhea, <laughs> hey, Pepto-Bismol, uh, stay the F home. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> you know, for everybody. For everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't nobody got time for that. And I'll say this. This is something that was told yeah. to me by a few training partners before. Um, you could do something uh, like like crap your pants at the gym back in the 80s and 90s and just move gyms. <laughs> Social media, Mm-mm. you'll never live it. it down. Ain't gonna happen. You will never. Yeah. God forbid someone gets it on video. Yeah. YouTube is forever. Yeah. So don't crap your pants at the gym. Yeah. There's, there's, my, there's, so, my, there's my token of so advice for you guys today. Personal, personal anecdote. Uh, I, <laughs> back when I was really, really poor and, and going and getting my master's degree and living off of like canned tuna uh, and, and spinach and eggs, and that was pretty much oh, it. Bodybuilder diet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I, so there was a sale on, on some soups at, at, the, uh, at the grocery store. So I was like, oh, soup, hell yeah. Got them all. All right, I won't name the brand, Chunkies, but uh, you know, got them all, and I went home. One of them, I don't know, looked a little dented. I wasn't really aware of botulism at the time. Had some soup, started to feel a little rumbling my tummy, but I had to go to work out. <laughs> I worked out. After about 15 minutes of working out, I threw down the dumbbells, sprinted out of the gymnasium, just barely made it home because I don't like to crap in public bathrooms, and. <laughs> just no, almost didn't make it to the toilet because I tried to work out on a below the neck. There you go. Uh, on a below the neck situation, uh, and it was it was close. This was pre social media, uh, so pre you know pre cell phone camera. Yep. So, but uh, yeah, man, we are we are both learning <laughs> about Hayes right now. <laughs> you and I, the viewers. You and I. There we go. Oh, man. See, I guess that's the military in me. Yeah. I'll crap anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. I mean, I will. I will. Don't don't get me wrong. I'll do it. I just don't. I just don't prefer it. I, I remember you know. coming back from the field and seeing a porta potty like it was like an oasis. <laughs> <gasps> yeah. Wait, I don't have to just do it right here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So All yeah, right. there we go. Um, <laughs> moving moving right on to more con- to a more to more controversy. <laughs> so um, there was an article that came out <clears throat> later late this past fall. Uh, it, it was titled The Inverse Relationship of Maximal Exercise Capacity to Hospitalization Secondary to Coronavirus Disease 2019. Hmm. I mean, we made it this far without... 18 minutes? Yeah. yeah. Not bad. Well, I mean, like, I don't know, whatever episode this is. 20, <laughs> 20-ish episodes without really diving in. Uh, yes. I mean, I'm not going to... Listen, this isn't political. This is not political at all. Nothing this is, here is political on the show. This Absolutely is, not. This is, like, straight, straightforward. So the conclusion... Uh, of this of this study, so we'll actually I'll kind of break it down a little bit. So they, they did look at 246 patients. Um, you know, average age was 59 years, plus or minus uh, standard deviation, plus or minus 12 years. Um, there were 42% were male, so that's a pretty even split. Um, 75% were the black race, and that's actually um, you know because so you hear 75%? a lot. 75% that's pretty high ratio. That's there, a yeah. high ratio because you, you hear, you've hear you heard a lot in the news, I'm sure, about how the uh, minority populations have been disproportionately affected by this disease. Yep. Um, you know, so point being, they looked at a vulnerable population, older uh, adults who are in a minority race. <clears throat> the conclusion, maximal exercise capacity is independently and inversely, uh, inversely associated with the likelihood of hospitalization due to COVID-19. So what that means is your ability, your, especially your cardiovascular endurance, the higher that is, the less likely that you will be, you will be hospitalized so by COVID-19 or similar types of virus. So you're telling me that the better your VO2 max and your capacity mm-hmm. for lungs, the less susceptibility to a respiratory infection. Yep, I, I don't. I'm not I telling don't see you see the correlation. There. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not telling you. The Mayo Clinic is telling you. Oh, well, they, yeah. yeah. The I'm Mayo, just saying. Yeah. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. yeah. You know, so you guys can go and uh, check this article out for yourselves. 
Uh, but the, the point the point is that you know the both of us engage in the things that we you know the act like lifestyle that we haven't chosen uh, to prevent ourselves from some coming to things of of this nature yeah. or at the very least to lessen the effects it was a byproduct for me it, my, mine was just to be as big as possible and strong as possible but at yeah. the same time while, while while trying to learn healthier habits of life along that process is brought me to the point where um it you know I'm not a high risk, um, you know. Given we're not we're not of age group to be high risk, but there are a lot of people our age who would be considered high, high risk. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. smokers, drinkers, you know, uh, those people who have not taken care of their body their entire life. So mm-hmm. yes, it was a it was a byproduct. And who who'd have thought that we'd have a, a viral infection this this deep into the society? Nobody. I mean, we all we all know it's it's out there. But yeah. So. Um, the, the, the studies are there. The data shows right now that the healthier people are, are des- definitely uh, affected much less. And when they are infected with the virus, they recover much quicker. quicker. Mm-hmm. It's going to be out there. It's going to show. Um, my, my recommendation, politi- politics aside, is start now. Yeah. Don't start wait. now. Supplement your, supplement your diet with some vitamins that help fight this stuff. Mm-hmm. Start, start walking. Start getting out, doing this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, because there may be another point where this happens in your lifetime. And next time, maybe you don't want to be as susceptible to it. Yep. Done. That's it. There you go. Exactly. So on that note, let's move on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know you got a fun one coming up, I, I right? Yeah. yeah. So now it is time for everyone's favorite part of the show. Just haze. Bro science. <laughs> <laughs> myths, 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 myths. It's gone. Myths. Okay, it's gone. Or pet peeves. Oh, uh, we I got another pet peeve. All right, let's got do it. another pet peeve. Yeah. Um, hip thrusters. What Donnie, how many how many times have you posted on your social media your max your PR on your hip thruster? Oh, in the gym. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. I thought we were gonna go. I was saying I don't want to talk about my reps on that because. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, um, the answer would be um, never. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I will tell you this, the reason why it's never is because I've never actually done it, whether it's on video or not. I've never <laughs> actually done it. And, so, I mean, I, I've, without any uh, equipment, I've squatted over 600 pounds. With equipment, I've squatted yeah. over 700 pounds. But how and I've that, never done a max. A max effort hip thruster? Hip thruster. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. So, look, uh, it's, hey, I am all about uh, getting your hips, your glutes stronger. My, you know, ladies, you wanna you wanna pump up that rump? Go for it. All right. My my question is when <laughs> is when you throw like 400 pounds on a barbell, but you have to go get like four air X pads and like a couple of yoga mats because side spotters. It's like side spotters, <laughs> and then like you inch your way into the bench, and then you're like, all right, wait, is my camera set up? Because hang on, here's gonna be my one rep max. Hip thruster, thirsty angle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 then and then you you hardly even achieve neutral hip extension, and it's all back. Why? I don't I don't understand. I don't understand why people are trying to max out hip thrusters. I'll it's tell like you why. maxing out a bicep curl. <laughs> why? I'll tell you why. My good friend Dr. Eric Nye loves it because he wants <laughs> he Please. wants your chiropractic work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, he wants your lower back to just be completely yeah. jacked up. Yeah, that's why I think you I know, know. It, like if you want to put like all barbell with like a forty five on there and just rep away, yes, go for it. It's great with it's, like you said with positive extension. With yeah, the hips, exactly. Bringing Bidding the glutes that through. extension, you're actually yeah. using your glutes. I mean, it's a bridge mm-hmm. exercise essentially. Right. It's doing a bridge, and you're just doing it through a greater. In fact, I've found out and uh, that lengthening the eccentric motion or i'm sorry shortening the eccentric motion so you don't go all the way down uh, engages the glutes more because you're taking the hamstring out of it for yeah. the for the initial initial mover yes so and that's the goal we're trying to if we're trying to focus on the glutes mm-hmm. and not just do a posterior chain exercise mm-hmm. let's try to minimize the amount of hamstring work in there so yeah so lighten the weight increase the reps full range of motion yeah yeah you know and it's just it, it it doesn't make any sense to me. I I I don't get it. I mean, it's a social media. I understand social media. Well, actually, I don't understand social media. But, <laughs> I, mean, I understand how social media is. I don't yeah. know, I don't understand the people who are on social media. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly, and what they like. But I, it just doesn't make any sense. There's no real actual you know functional benefit from it. Um, and there's a whole bunch of negative. <laughs> there's a whole bunch of negative. I mean, all honestly, I mean, the guys are the ones who should be maxing out their hip thrusters. So. 
You know what I'm saying? Now we're going back full circle back there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we don't need max effort, though. You guys need to work on more reps, if you yeah. know what I mean, yeah. from yeah. what I've heard from yeah. the ladies, I think. I don't <laughs> yeah, we, we don't need to be no one-pump chop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, Fruit. I was trying to beat around the bush. You just, like, mowed it right down. Got it. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Speaking of mowed it down. <laughs> Are we going to end this? <laughs> Are we going to just keep going? Just keep going for Part two coming soon. <laughs> yeah, this is where we get canceled. <laughs> talk about COVID. We're talking. No, everything. What else do we want to talk about? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dr. Yeah. Seuss. Let's, I don't know. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't know. Let's wrap it up. Yeah. Johnny. Where can people see you do your hip thrusters? Uh, nowhere. I don't want to even be seen. I'm going to put John Smith as the uh, producer of this one. They don't want to see me. Nah, uh, Facebook.com slash Strength and Performance Institute. This facility that you're in, you can't see it, of course, but we're in my facility here. Um, is where it's located right here in Clearwater, Florida. And then uh, Instagram, where the fun stuff's at. Instagram.com slash Donnie Kiernan. You're up. Oh, sorry. Hey, I'm Dr. Hayes Estes. <laughs> I'm the owner, I was just thinking about hip thrusters, yeah. the owner of, of Premier Physical Therapy, Doctor of Physical Therapy. You can find us, Premier Physical Therapy, on the Facebook, facebook.com slash, I'm doing both of yours, oh, PT and Sports Therapy. <laughs> <laughs> We're also on, on Instagram at Run. Short one that time. Yeah. Run Tampa Bay. <laughs> God. I've done at least two hip thrusters in my lifetime because I have two children. Yep. Trophies. <laughs> We're out. <laughs> We're out. Oh. We're canceled. <laughs> I, I wasn't going to go there, but then. But why not? Yeah, why, why not? not? My mom. Yeah. Oh. All right, Focus. Let's, hey. All right. Let's be serious and educated ish. Yeah. Ish. Ish.